Praise the Lord. How many people have been reading the book of the month? You've, you've read, you've been reading the book of the month. How many people finished the book of June, the triumphant church? Amen. July, praise. July, praise. Anybody finish August? <laughs> Amen. We're running on a race. We're on a race. We're on a race. You know, uh, 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 one of our IT gurus here, you know, our brother Alex, shared a tip with me that's helped me. By God's grace, I'm all caught up. Now I'm about to start the book of this month. You know, so because before I used to find time to read the books, but I, I drive a lot. You know, about 30 minutes downtown, another 30 minutes back. But he shared with me how, you know, with uh, those that have, you know, uh, uh, certain types of devices, you can, <laughs> you can actually read the book out to you. You know, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, when, so when I'm driving, I just, he reads the book out to me, and it's been awesome. So please, there is always a way. I know it, it's, a, it's a huge task because many of us are busy people, but we need to find time to read, to read. We are being proactive in our learning. So it's not when challenges come, you're now looking for solutions, being reactive. It is very important. Even Paul said, bring with me the parchments, the books, my many books. So Paul was an avid reader. Paul was an avid reader. Many of the blogs we read, Facebook posts we read, they don't benefit your life in any way. Most often, you've even forgotten what you read, that post you read. Wow, very powerful, but then you keep scrolling, and you read more, and you read more, and then, you know, you don't retain anything. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So please, I encourage you to read the book of the month. It is very important, and this month is a secret of success. Very, very important. Uh, uh, you know, in those days when I, when I see people that are prosperous, you know, I, I, I used to be around people many, many years ago that would say, oh, no, he's a thief, or she's a thief, or because they're doing this bad thing or the other. But everyone that is successful, they have secrets. And we see those things even in the Bible. So please pick up the book and read, and I know that God will bless us as we do so. Amen. Amen. The testimony galore started July 13th. And the Holy Spirit has asked us to do it for at least for three months. For three months. So we're going up until October 13th. Please, I, you're encouraged. Whatever medium you choose, uh, please just make sure that you're sharing your testimonies with others. The testimonies of what God has done for you. The testimonies that you've heard that God has done for others. Please go ahead and share them. We've, heard, we've had many, many experiences. You know, our brother shared the testimony of someone all the way in the Bahamas that got, that his life was rededicated to Christ because of the testimony he saw online. Amen. So please, I encourage you to do that because that's instruction we've been given. You know, we, we, we've experienced some amazing testimonies, blessings because of what we have obeyed. I shared it with us, you know, went to, uh, went to the bank for a mortgage renewal, and the system made a mistake. Instead of 2.9 today, they gave me 2.65. And then the lady later called and said, hey, I made a mistake, and, you know, I have to reverse it. There's nothing I can do. I said, you know what, give me a day. And her bosses told her that she would have to take, they would have to take it out of her salary, you know, out of her pay. And I didn't want that to happen. But by the, by the first day, when we got back home at night, I got an email from her saying, yeah, they've approved it. The five years. Praise God. And, and that can only happen because of God. That can only happen when banks make mistakes. You know that that is God. <laughs> they, they, they never make those kind of mistakes. They even want to take more from you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. So this month, we're exploring the theme, the overflow of prosperity. The overflow of prosperity. Many of us here today are already blessed. But I believe that there is still another higher level of blessing. Because the Bible says that the path of the just is like a shining sun that keeps getting brighter and brighter and brighter until the most perfect day. Proverbs chapter 18, chapter 4 and verse 18. 
the path of the just. So no matter where we are, God is saying that there is still another level that he can take us to. If we are willing. The Bible says if we are willing and obedient, we will eat the good of the land. So this morning we'll be talking about what is in your hand. What's in your hand. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and ask them, what is in your hands? There is something that God has given to every human being on the earth. Something. And that thing is, is meant to cause us to prosper. It's meant to cause us to prosper. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Proverbs 18.16. The Bible says, a man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. The gift that God has given. It is not just a, it's not just a talent. A talent is a subset of the gift. It is not just a talent. Lot perhaps did not have any talent. His own gift was his relationship with Abraham. There are some people that are blessed today just because they are connected to an important person. So their own gift is relationship. They have the right connections. Relationships. Or networks as we call them here. Praise God. Hallelujah. The same way when people go to visit, you know, or, or, or go, to, go to celebrate with, with, with a new, with a, uh, with a couple that has just given birth, uh, and, they, and they go with gifts, the same thing happened to Jesus. That's the same way God gives gifts to every child that comes into the earth. If human beings can give gifts, how much more God? How much more God? Even God said himself that if you, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Holy Spirit, will God give uh, good gifts to those who ask? Or the Holy Spirit to those who ask? So if we can go with gifts, don't you expect that God gives gifts to kids when they are coming into the earth? He does. Yours might not be the same as mine. But every human being on the face of the earth, came to the earth with a gift. The irony is that some people have located their gifts and are working their gifts. While some are, have not located theirs, or while some have located it, but they have despised their own gifts. If only I could sing like that person. Even though you have your own gift, interpersonal skills, there's nobody you cannot talk to, you cannot connect with, which is a gift. But then you are longing for another person's gift. And you quote the Bible saying, oh, you know, covet earnestly the best gifts. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Every one of us, we have gifts. I'll just address something quickly before we get into the main, the main text. There's a story in the Bible in 2 Kings chapter 4 from verse 1 to 7. 2 Kings chapter 4 from verse 1 to 7. And it is, it is about Elisha and the widow's oil. And the widow rather. Elisha and the widow. You know, many times people want to use, they want to survive on miracles. And I would explain. But everything has its place. In this story, the widow ran to Elisha. Let, let, let me read that to you. I'm reading from verse 1 now. A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord. And the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. So Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? And she said, your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Then he said, go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons, then pour it into those vessels and set aside the full ones. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured it out. 
Now it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. The oil ceased. That's very important. Then she came and told the man of God. And he said, go sell the oil and pay your debt. And you and your sons live on the rest. This is not a picture of the miracle making her prosperous. No. The miracle brought her and her family out of debt, preserved the family, and then gave them things to live on. But when we are talking about the overflow of prosperity, this is not the picture that we're painting. Many times people want to depend on miracles. After the oil ceased, did Elisha give her anything to be making the oil flow indefinitely? No. In order, we, we looked at this on Thursday, in order for us to key into prosperity, we must be adding value. We must add value. We must know the value we have, which is the gift we have, and we must put it to work in the lives of the people. From the story we've read here, there's nothing about the value that she's adding except taking care of her children. But in this story, we see something that is key to what we're talking about this month. Elisha said, what do you have? What do you have? I remember meeting with someone many years ago, and she was telling me, oh, you know, she doesn't have any skills, any talent, she's broke and everything. I said, no, 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 no. Let's sit down and look at the inventory of what God has given to you, your gift. And she said, yeah, you know, I have this, I can do this, I can do that. And the way she spoke about the things she has, I realized why she was at that level. Because she was despising them. Oh, yeah, I'm good with people, but yeah, that's, that's really nothing. But I cannot sing, I cannot dance, I cannot do this, I cannot do that. Elisha said, what do you have? No matter how broke you are, you have something. No matter the challenges you're going through, there is something that is in your hand. God is not a magician. You know, in studying the book of Genesis, I realized something about God. He creates in a sustainable way. God creates in a sustainable manner. Anything that we claim God did that is not sustainable, we need to check the source. God does things in a sustainable way to replicate itself. Elisha was used of God to perform the miracle, but I can imagine if the woman decided to get married again and have more children, then she would need to go back to Elisha again for another miracle. What is in your hand? Another man in scripture is Isaac. Isaac. And we see a story here in Genesis chapter 26. Genesis chapter 26 from verse 1 to 5. And I read. There was a famine in the land. Genesis chapter 26 from verse 1 to 5. There was a famine in the land besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Gerah. Then the Lord appeared to him and said, do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land of which I shall tell you. I'll just pause there. We live in a world today where people believe that their prosperity is tied to a location. The truth is, <laughs> I originally came from a country. I won't say which country. <laughs> Many people here know anyway. You know, where people believe that until they go to America... They can never be prosperous. But then the truth is, even in the so-called America, there are some people that are poor, in poverty. And I'm wondering, how, how is that possible? Even in the so-called Western nations, there are some people that are living on the streets. So it means that no location has the prerogative of prosperity. 
in the countries where people are running away from, some people are prosperous. Many times people don't take their time to ask God, where do you want me to be? You see the story of Isaac? When there was famine, Abraham, his father, ran to Egypt. So when there was another famine, what did he do? He said, hey, family, let's go to Egypt. The same way daddy went to Egypt when there was famine. Thank God that God appeared to him. Thank God. And God appeared to him and said, no, 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 no. Don't go down to Egypt. Live in the land of which I shall tell you. Verse 3 now, dwell in this land and I will be with you and bless you. For to you and your descendants I give all these lands. And I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham, your father. God is the one that blesses. Joseph was in slavery. But even in the house of Potiphar, the Bible says he was blessed. Everything he did prospered. A slave prospered. A slave is a tool. A slave is, is like a chair. It's, in those days, they owned it as property. A property prospered. And the Bible says, because God was with him. If God did not send you somewhere, he might not be with you there. Oh, yes. Thank you, Haley. Praise God. The Bible says, verse 4 now, and I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of heaven. I will give to your descendants all these lands. And in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Verse 5 now, because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. And now let's jump to verse 12 now, verse 12 to 14. Let's see the result of that, of what God said. Now verse 12, then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. This here shows us an important principle. What is in your hands? Isaac had seeds to sow. And, and let, let me clarify, because in this day and age in the church, most times when we hear sow, we just think of putting money, you know, giving money to the church or giving money to the pastor or to somebody. That's, that's, that's a limited view of that. So when we say so, it is not only just taking money and giving to the church or to the pastor or to other people. No, it goes beyond that. Some people need to sow their talents and put it to use. It is the same thing as having a skill that will benefit people. And in, 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 in farming, you are putting your skill to use, either even volunteering. That is sowing. The Bible says, and Isaac sowed in that land. No matter how much God blesses a person, if you don't sow, you will not reap. No matter how much God wants to bless a person, if you don't sow, you will not reap. Because it is a principle that God has put in place. He breaks those principles once or twice. You know, we can see that in scriptures. But it is a principle. And a principle means that if you follow what needs to be done, you will get the results that you need to get. If you do not sow, you will not reap. Which means only those that have sown are reaping. So if you see someone reaping, then it means that you might not have been there, but they have been sowing. They have been sowing. They have been sowing. Many times we talk about, oh, this guy is an overnight success. This woman is an overnight success. Oh, things just went quickly. No, 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 no. Before you begin to rush, go and ask them when they were sowing. You say, but he's so young. She's so young. No, no, no. They might have started sowing early. And you were not there. You were not there. But these days, nobody wants to pay the price. But that's on our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. And then Isaac sowed in that land that God asked him to be and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. 
<laughs> and then verse 13. This, this is just awesome. Verse 13 now. The man began to prosper. Everybody say began to prosper. You see, many people, when they begin to prosper, they run away from God. And you know, it, it's, it's very, very unwise. Unwise. You know, people think uh, the word foolish is very, you know, <laughs> insulting. So I like to say unwise. Amen. Uh, uh, uh. But if you read this verse, the Bible says he began to prosper and then he continued prospering until he became very prosperous. So many people don't wait to continue prospering. <laughs> they begin to prosper and they get out of God. And some people continued to prosper. And then at that point, they left God. They didn't become prosperous. They didn't become prosperous. <laughs> but we thank God that Isaac stayed with God. Verse 14 now. For he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and a great number of servants. So the Philistines envied him. The equivalent is what happened to Joseph. That the whole nation, in essence, envied him. You know, when, when you read about, read the story of Joseph, in one of those times when his brothers, his family, you know, his brothers came, and he now revealed himself to them, and they were, they were eating. The Bible says they ate at the table, and the Egyptians, it was a taboo for them to eat at the same table with Hebrews, with Jews. And Joseph was a Jew. So the Egyptians did not eat at the same table with him. The equivalent is the Egyptians were racists. But Joseph was still ruling over them even though they were racist towards him. The fact that he, be he became their ruler did not remove the racism. Because some people complain and say, oh, you know, this color, that color. I, I don't look at color. I don't look at color. It's just pigmentation. When God blesses, nobody can stand in your way. No matter who you are. Male, female. No matter who you are. Nobody can stand in your way. Can I hear a believing amen? amen? So the Philistines envied him. The entire nation envied this man and his family because he obeyed God. God has told many people to stay in Edmonton and plant, but they want to go somewhere else. God has told some people to be in a particular field, do a particular business, but they want to do something else. And they expect God to bless it. Because to them, it is not fashionable. I heard a story about a man, a pastor. He was also an accountant. And then he, he said he got to a point he was just tired, you know, working for someone, laboring. And he went to God and said, Lord, make a way for me. And according to the story, God told him, go begin to roast peanuts. But roast yours with honey. And according to the last account that I heard, he was already prosperous. With private jets and all of all that, roasting peanuts with honey. The look on some of your faces is like, really? <laughs> oh, yes. If you follow what God is saying, he will put you ahead of the curve. Before it becomes mainstream, you would have profited from it long time ago. And everybody now, you see, people rally around success. That's why in certain countries, you have ministries everywhere today. There was a time when ministry, you go into ministry, they'll say, ah, I'm so sorry, God called you. Oh, wow. I'm so, don't worry, I'll support you. I'll help you financially, don't worry. But today, many ministers are prosperous now. So some people, oh, I love God. Ah, God, did you say I should start a church? Oh, yes. <laughs> and they go do it. Why? Because they've seen many people prospering from it. 
the key is, what is God asking you to do? Yours will be different from mine, most likely. What is God asking you to do? And focus on it. Focus on it. It might not pay out in the beginning. It might not pay off in the beginning. But the Bible says in Habakkuk chapter 2, it says, at the end, it shall speak. At the end, it will be obvious that this was God. At the end, it will be obvious. The race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strongest. Oh, yes. But time and chance happens to them all. And God is the one that controls time and chance. In Exodus chapter 4, verse 1, Exodus chapter 4, from verse 1 to 5. God met with Moses. Then Moses answered and said, But suppose we, they will not believe me, nor listen to my voice. Suppose they will say, The Lord has not appeared to you. So the Lord said to him, What is in your hand? What is in your hand? This man, for over 40 years, had learned to use the rod to direct, to hit cattle, to direct the herds, the sheep, everything. He was very, very, imagine using a tool for 40 years. He'd be very good at it. And God was sending him to a different, to a different calling. And he was confused. He didn't have confidence. And God said, what is in your hand? He said, the rod. Why did God use the rod? Because he was already very good at it. You see, the problem is many times we despise what we have. That's why it is good to be under authority, God's authority, and to have human spiritual authority. Because many times the gifts we have, sometimes some people don't even see it. We can't see it ourselves. It takes people that love you to say, hey, you, you, you're very good at this. You say, really? Is that even anything? No, you're very good at this. You're very good at this. You're very good at that. You're a natural leader. People just follow you. Really? So he said, a rod. And then he said, cast it on the ground. This is God now teaching him how to use the gifts. Cast it on the ground. So he cast it on the ground and it became a serpent. And Moses fled from it. You know, when we allow God to show us how to use our gifts, even you, you'll be afraid of yourself. <laughs> when you see the results coming from the gift, <laughs> you'll be afraid. You'll be afraid. Oh, yeah, you'll be afraid. Then verse 4, Then the Lord said to Moses, Reach out your hand and take it by the tail. And he reached out his hand and cut it, and it became a rod in his hand. It is the equivalent of, you know, using your fingerprint to oh, turn on your phone. The same gift you have and that you're using. If somebody else goes, imagine somebody picking up Moses' rod and throwing it on the ground. Do you think it's going to become a snake? No. <laughs> no. Or maybe Moses threw it and it became a snake and somebody says, I want to pick it up. This snake will bite them. Don't be afraid when you're using your gift. You know, there'll be many copycats that want to come and, you know, they've seen what you're doing. They want to take it illegally and they want to go and use it. Don't worry. Don't worry. It is still made. <laughs> They can take all your messages, but they can't preach it like you. Someone told me, you know, online she, she was running a business. And she said, you know, some of her competitors, she'll post stuff on YouTube, Facebook. They'll just take the exact words and they'll just copy it on their own page. <laughs> Amen. No. They can be doing the same things you're doing, cleaning business, whatever. But they can't do it the way you're doing it. Because God has given you that rod specifically. Everybody plays sports. But yours will be a bit different. I remember there used to be a, a footballer then many, many years ago. I don't remember his name now. 
His own unique celebration style was when he scores a goal, he, he does, he, you know, back, back flips many times, multiple times. That was his own signature. And now, you know, after a while, many people now started doing it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But, but you know, verse, verse 17 is the key here. Verse 17 is the key here. It says, and you shall take this rod in your hand with which you shall do the signs. And you shall take this rod in your hands with which you shall do the signs. When I was going into ministry, I asked God because I, have, I studied quite a number of other ministries. Different styles, different, it's the same Holy Spirit, but manifesting in different ways, different things, personalities, all that. And I went to God and I said, Lord, how, how, how do you want us to be? And, and then he told me, this is who you are, this is how you should do it. Don't go in that direction. It doesn't mean they are necessarily evil or bad. No, 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 no. But don't go in that direction. Don't struggle to be like those people that you are not naturally. Some people minister and because of their personality, they are always screaming. There's nothing wrong with that. So far as you can hear what they are saying, there's nothing wrong. And some people are naturally cool. And they just teach. They just preach without hollering and all of all that. That's them. That's their style. At the end of the day, so far as the word of God is going through, and you are allowing the word of God to do what it is meant to do. And then I was at peace. And I minister the way God has made me to minister. Praise the Lord. And I honor and respect those that are doing it the way that God has made them to do it. At the end of the day, so far as the people are being blessed, that's all that matters. And we allow God to do his work. Can I hear a believing amen? amen. So, God told Moses, you shall take this rod in your hand. So the question is, what is in your hands? Some of us, what we have is organization. You can organize any, anything and anybody. Some of us, what you have is your networks, your links. One way or the other, God has just put you in a place where you're just connected to all sorts of people. How do you know you have that? Whenever people need a plumber, it is you they call. Do you know anybody that is good at plumbing? And you connect them. Whenever they need, you know, uh, someone that can do it, it is you they call. Hey, I'm trying to start this business. I'm looking for, do you know anybody? Oh, yeah, I know someone. And you connect them. You're a resource. But you might not just know how to utilize that gift to now Cause yourself to prosper. That's where God comes in. That's where God comes in. You can't tell me you're on this earth a child of God and you don't have something he has given to you that nobody else has. No. No, it is impossible. The Bible says that God is not a man that he should lie. He's not a man that he should lie. Open your eyes and see. Ask the right people, the right questions. Because you see many people in the Bible, and we're going to look at one last example here and then we close. They, they discovered their gifts in different ways. I'll say this by the leading of the Holy Spirit. You see, I said earlier that what Lot had was his relationship with Abraham. Lot, the Bible didn't tell us any specific key skill that Lot had that made him prosper. Because the Bible says, and Lot also had many flocks and possessions. But the moment he disconnected from Abraham, he began to go down. He moved outside Sodom and Gomorrah, so he did not have discernment. <laughs> Abraham, when you see an elderly person tell you, oh, just choose anyone, it's okay. <laughs> you, <laughs> you better pause and say, no, sir, no, you choose for me. <laughs> you choose for me. <laughs> You're dealing with anointing. You choose for me. And he looked and he saw the green, the land was green. He said, ah, let me outsmart this old man. I'm, I'm going there. 
So he didn't even care that his uncle was going to be in the place that was not green. So he went there. He did not know he was going close to danger. The next thing you saw in your Bible, Lot and his family, they were now inside Sodom and Gomorrah. When he left, they were on the outskirts. After a while, they went inside. And the same Abraham was who God used to go and rescue him. And this man still did not know enough to reconnect back with Abraham. You see Ruth and Naomi. She said, ah, no, your people will be my people. Wherever you go, I will go. She was wiser than Lot. Some people, they get blessed in a ministry. And then they become blessed and then they leave. And when they get in trouble, they go back to the place, they get delivered, and then they go back, they leave again. Like Lot. Amen. We need to open our eyes and see and understand things. Understand, understand, understand. Let's look at very quickly Jacob in the Bible. Genesis chapter 25, verse 27. One, one thing I love to do whenever I meet with people, either ministers of the gospel, I, I want to know what, what is their main calling? What is the main message God has given to them? And by the time you look very closely with the help of the Holy Spirit, you discover the main message, the main message. And the same thing when I meet with people. God has just given me that grace. I see what he wants them to be. Not where they are, but what he wants them to be. And I just see the gifts they have, their uniqueness. Because every human being is unique. Unique. Genesis 25, 27. So the boys grew, and Esau was a skillful hunter, a man of the field. But Jacob was a mild man dwelling in tents, otherwise known as a shepherd. Jacob was a shepherd. So now, when Jacob left his house, his father's house, running away from Esau, it was the same gift he had that he utilized in the strange place. And we're going to read that together quickly. Uh, uh, Genesis chapter 29, Genesis 29 from verse 1 to 10. Genesis chapter 29 from verse 1 to 10. So Jacob went on his journey and came to the land of the people of, people of the east. And he looked and saw a well in the field. And behold, there were three flocks of sheep lying by it. For out of that well they watered the flocks. A large stone was on the well's mouth. Okay. A large stone was there. Now all the flocks would be gathered there and they would roll the stone from the well's mouth, water the sheep, and put the stone back in its place on the well's mouth. And Jacob said to, her, to them, my brethren, where are you from? And they said, we are from Haran. <laughs> then he said to them, do you know Laban, the son of Nahor? That was Jacob's uncle, his mother's brother. And they said, we know him. So he said to them, is he well? And they said, he is well. And look, his daughter Rachel is coming with the sheep. Remember, Jacob was a shepherd, skillful shepherd. Hmm. Then he said, look, it is still high day. This is Jacob speaking. It is not time for the cattle to be gathered together. Water the sheep and go and feed them. He, he got to a strange place, a new location, because of the gift God has given to him. He already noticed a mistake that the people there were making. And already, his gift was already making a way for him. <laughs> but they said, we cannot until all the flocks are gathered together and they have rolled the stone. They, they, I wonder who they are. And they have rolled the stone from the well's mouth. And then we watered the sheep. Now, while he was still speaking with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep. 
for she was a shepherdess. No wonder Jacob now loved her. <laughs> and it came to pass, when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, that Jacob went near and rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. Now verse 11. Then Jacob kissed Rachel and lifted up his voice and wept. And Jacob told Rachel that he was a father's relative and Rebekah's son. And she ran and told her father. Then it came to pass, when Laban heard the report about Jacob, his sister's son, that he ran to meet him and embraced him and kissed him and brought him to his house. So he told Laban all these things. And Laban said to him, surely you are my bone and my flesh. And he stayed with him for a month. Then Laban said to Jacob, because you are my relative, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me what should your wages be. Now, verse, verse 12, I believe, says, when Laban heard the report. What report did Laban hear? Laban heard when Rachel went to tell him, hey, this guy... He's related to us. You see all those people that were just there, they didn't know what to do. This guy just came. And immediately he rolled the stone and he fed the cattle. He knew the right time to feed the cattle. He knew the right time to feed. And Laban said, hey, that guy is good. I need to hire that guy. Laban did not hire him because, oh, you're my relative, you know, dead weight, so just come and just pay you and go. No, he hired them because of the report he heard. Let's put it into this language. He hired them because he read in his resume that at some point from this year to this year, from this time to this time, I rolled the waste stone, I fed cattle that did not belong to me, and, and I did it the right way. And Laban was mesmerized by what he read. The gift of a man will make a way for them. Will make a way for them. Jacob went to a new place and that same day he got there, he already got a job. That's what the Bible is saying. <laughs> Immediately he showed up there. He got a job. And he kept the same job for 14 years. Over 14 years. We want to have job security. Wealth, security, value. Value. So far as you are adding value, nobody can remove you from anywhere. There will always be restructurings. There will always be things happening and firings and hirings. But so far, I mean, no matter how they restructure an organization, if they still need to make money, they still need to keep some people. They need to keep them. And if you're adding value, to making the organization wealthy, who in their right senses will remove you? Add value. Tell your neighbor, add value. Add value. In the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. We're going to round up there because of time. But please just rise up to your feet, please. Hello, thank you so much for joining us. This month of August, we're focusing on the overflow of prosperity. What does God say about prosperity? Does God want us to be prosperous? Those are things we'll be exploring in the month of August. Do you know what it means to actually be prosperous? Do you know what it means to be wealthy? The key is value. Are you able to demonstrate value? Because human beings, they pay for what they believe they are getting value for. Among other things, that's what we'll be exploring in the month of August. The theme is based on 2 Chronicles chapter 1 and verse 15. The Bible says here that, And the king, that is Solomon, made silver and gold as common in Jerusalem as stones. Can you imagine that? Silver and gold as common as stones? And the Bible also says, And he made cedars as abundant as the sycamores which are in the lowland. I am trusting God that in this month of August, God would 
equip us with what we need to actually be prosperous. I'm not talking about having liabilities that are more than your assets, but I'm talking about real prosperity that has a solid foundation in God. Please tune in if you're able to join us. We meet at Yellowbird East Community League, 10-19 Avenue, Edmonton, Alberta. Or you could just connect with us online. We meet on Sundays, 9.30 a.m. and also 6.30 p.m. every single Thursday. I would love to see you there. Praise the Lord. If you're listening to this broadcast or you, you've listened to the message and you feel like, you know what, Pastor, I'm not born again. I want to come to Christ. All you need to do is just repeat this prayer after me from the depths of your heart. And according to the Bible, according to scriptures, you are now born again. Please repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I accept you into my heart today. I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I know you are the Savior. And I ask you to please come into my heart. Forgive me of every sin that I have committed. And fill me with the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. From today, if you said that prayer from the depths of your heart, you are born again. Please send us a note on the website. You'll see the address on the screen there. And the contact us page, we'd love to hear from you so we can send you some materials that will help you grow. Remember, Jesus is Lord. Talk to you soon. Bye now.